And I'm really glad, uh, great to be here today and see so many in the room. And actually, it's also great that Orhe is here because his wife is expecting a baby today. So, so I'm glad he's here. We did have a backup just in case. But uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Beacon, uh, which I will explain in a minute, and then how we use machine learning uh, you know, to personalize the game experience. And Jorge will take you through, uh, you know, technically how we deliver that experience. Uh, so let's, let's start with, so Bacon. So, and then, now let's be very clear, we call this Beacon, not Bacon. Uh, it would insult some of our friends if we were talking about Bacon today. So the product we have is Beacon. So learn a little, we'll learn a little bit about what Beacon is, and then I'll talk a little bit more. Say hello to Beacon. Beacon is a full suite of market-leading tech created by game developers for game developers that helps game teams launch, operate, optimize, and grow their games. The culmination of over 10 years of mobile game industry learnings Beacon is available to all Rovio game teams from day one, providing a comprehensive platform for operating free-to-play games. Beacon's tools and services support games throughout their entire life cycle, including baseline tools for market testing and launch, the models to predict and profitably grow the game with user acquisition, keeping players engaged with live ops and maximizing players' fun with customized game experiences and intelligently optimizing in-app purchases and ads to maximize earnings. Game making can be a science and an art. Beacon takes care of the science, so you can focus on crafting joy. Oh, let me talk a little bit about Beacon and give you an idea of the services we provide. And so Beacon's mission is to enable Rovio's game teams to craft the joy. And we deliver this by delivering over 50 connected services. And we'll talk about that connectivity in a little bit. And we start with the player, we put the player at the center of everything we do. Because by doing that, you know, we can deliver a player level experience and leverage that data to make decisions. So actually Beacon, when you start a Rovio game, delivers a player-specific configuration. So every player gets their own experience in the game. And this, mean, this enables us to bring our games to life. I will show you a handful of the services to give you an, an idea of how this works. So this is a service called the Live Ops Calendar. And you can see this is uh, Angry Birds Dream Blast. And this was a Halloween event we were running until about this time last week. And the calendar enables us uh, to bring the game to life every day. You know, multiple events running, not just one. And it effectively enables the game to run as a service. So, uh, you yeah, know, th in this case, uh, this is the Endless Nightmare, and it was a seasonal event. They can have you know, follow-on seasonal events, and the tool actually enables the games to schedule events, you know, use templates to, uh, to then reschedule and repeat those events. They can change the reward, they can change the assets, etc., and basically do a lot of the work of live operating the game without a developer. But you can also target here as well. So you can target based on player behavior, you know, early game cycle, late game cycle, etc. Another example is player communication. It's really important that we engage our fans and talk to our fans. And player communication here enables us, as you can see here in this example, their you know, Dream Blast is promoting. Uh, it's Facebook page uh, as part of the community engagement. But this can be used to talk about uh, upcoming events. It can be used to run surveys for targeted players. It can be used for player support and reward players if we've had an issue with the game, etc. And again, you have the same targeting capability. 
we use ads and IP to monetize our games. And here, this is our ad platform. We actually run our own ad mediation, and we outperform uh, the leading uh, networks and mediation providers. And we have about 20, sorry, about 30 different ad sources, including uh, cross promotion and our own house campaigns. Uh, but we're delivering these into the game in a way that we look to maximize the experience for the game player as well. So you know, in this case, and the game, it's a video reward, and we can target the frequency, for example, of the video rewards uh, at a player level again, and really bring that targeted experience to our ads, not just using, uh, you know, as most networks would do, the data they have about player, but actually using the first party data and our understanding and the models that we run ourselves. And then, this is really the beef. We talked about targeting and segmentation, uh, and this is manage. Uh, and there's an example here of us running an, an offer in Dream Blast for a player, and obviously, they, in this case, this is actually me, even though it says John Doe. And I've been a spender in this game, but I'm a lapsed spender, so it's making a great offer to me. And this you know, tool enables you to, uh, to you know, build rules and target them to set segments with criteria and then make it actionable. And you can run A-B tests in this tool. And you also, when you do that, you get the results in a format where you don't need a BI analyst. Uh, yeah, so they can do the more complex work as well. And then in this case, it's chosen to deliver me this offer. And this will have been based on A-B testing, but then a human decision has been made on how we decide you know, what's the optimum global variant that you know, I should offer for this segment of players. Now, the clever thing is, as uh, Jorge will explain, is we don't need to rely on human decisions. We can actually use machine learning models to decide what the best outcome is and what the optimum experience is. So rather than setting a global optimum variant for me as a player, it can actually decide on the fly what the best variant is. So I'm going to let Jorge come to the stage and explain how we, you know, the couple of use cases of how we use this and technically how we've implemented it as well. So please, Jorge. Hey, thank you, David. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jorge Ramirez Carrasco. I am a senior machine learning engineer here at Robio. And today I'm going to talk to you about personalized rules. It is one of the tools that we have available at Beacon based on machine learning. So I would like to start uh, with a question that is actually the same question that we did ourselves when we started the developing of personalized rules. And that question is, how can we ensure that the best gaming experience is delivered? Anyone? If you think about it, it's, it's a really hard question. And even myself, as an individual player, I have to confess I'm not very good playing video games. So I usually enjoy more levels that are a bit easier than average. But for sure, that won't work for all the players. And if we look at it from the Robio perspective, we have millions of players around the world so the gaming experience that we can deliver for all of them for sure has to be different. So this was our solution. We want to optimize any aspect of our games and the level of individual players. So we are convinced that the only way that we can go forward is to provide personalization at the level of individual players so every person could receive the best gaming experience for themselves. Let's see, let's change our hat and let's imagine that we are a game team, okay? So we have our game and we want to test if some aspect of our game, that could be different versions of our user interface, it could be different offers that we want to offer to our players, it could be the level of difficulty, it could be if helping in the first level of the day or not. And 
we have that question and we want to ask ourselves, is this the right gaming experience for our players? So this is how it actually works in the industry, is the traditional method, A-B testing. So let's imagine that uh, we are the game team and we want to see, should we help our players in their levels? Yes or not? Okay, let's make an experiment. Let's uh, split our players in two groups. The group of players is going to be represented by our Angry Birds, and we're going to have one gaming experience A, where we are going to help the players in the first level of the day, and then we are going to have a group of players playing this gaming experience B, where we don't help them at all. So what actually could happen is that, for uh, example, this group of players, they actually like to receive that help, and they seem to work uh, quite well. And then for those that we are not helping them, some of them are quite disgusted because they felt this was too challenging, but some of them, they actually like it. They like more challenging games, so that's worth for them. But when we see at the data, we see that the majority of them seems to enjoy when they receive some help. So we have to move with the majority. So at the end, we select the version where we are helping them. And what actually happened is that, yeah, it works quite well for the majority, but there were some players that they actually like it more, the version B, where they didn't have, we didn't have that help. So this is our solution. This is personalized rules. And what is changing personalized rules is that we're going to have in the middle a machine learning model that is actually a reinforcement learning model that is going to learn about our players. It's going to learn about the decisions of assigning the version where we are helping or the version where we are not helping. And it's going to be smarter enough to decide which version should be assigned for each group of players. So at the end, they will receive the one that they really like. Let's see here like a full picture of the two approaches. So in this first experiment phase, in both uh, approaches, the A-B test and personalized rules, we have the two versions of the game live. But the main difference is that the, in the A-B test case, we have to take one. We have to say which is the one that works for the majority of the people. And what we think is that this is, at the end, suboptimal. Whereas in the case where we have this machine learning model in the middle making the decision, we could have in production both of them living life, and at the end we will have contribution for all the kind of players enjoying the best gaming experience for them. This is beautiful in the theory, but uh, let's see some use cases that we did in the past with Angry Bird Dream Blast. I'm going to show you two of them. One was that the one that we did at the very beginning of the development. The second one is quite recent from some months ago. And they are actually using different reinforcement learning models. But let's jump to them, and, and then we can go a bit deeper. This first use case, as I say, is Angry Bird Dream Blast. And what we are trying to do is conversion offers. So what we have here is the control variant, as David mentioned. This is the game baseline. So this was one offer that worked quite well for the game. It was 300 coins by 0 0.99, and they made their experiments, and that's an offer that, would, that works quite well. And now we wanted to make a competition of that control variant against one machine learning model with reformer learning that is going to be learning about the players and assigning offers between these four. So we are also including that offer, but we wanted to add some variation with some booster, power-ups, and so on. So we put that in a competition, and these were the results. Comparing the personalized variant against the control variant, we saw no impact on retention, but we saw, for example, in revenue, plus 6.2%, and then also some increment in the conversion rates and number of purchases. And I like really this chart because it's actually what we thought about it in the theory. We have the control variant, that is the game baseline, the purchase count is the level of the height of the chart. And as expected, the control variant works quite well. But if we had let the machine learning to decide which is the best game experience for them, in this case, the best offer for each group of players, the contribution of having all the offers live is able to beat those results that work quite well. In this second use case, uh, we are Changing a bit the context, so in this case, what we want to see is if we should help the players in the first level of the day. So again, in Dream Blast, by default, 
this was the game baseline. So the players received some help in the first level of the day. And we wanted to see, OK, what will happen if we have a machine learning model learning about the players and deciding if they should receive some help or not help? Because maybe there could be some players that like more challenging situations. In this second use case, we are using a full informal learning problem. So we are not just taking decisions over one single action. We could have sequence of actions. So th these were some results. Uh, what we are seeing here is the top five most se frequent sequence of actions. So these are 10 days sequence. So for each of the players, they could end up in different buckets. There are not only five. There are all the possibilities of helping, not helping in 10 days. But these were the top five most frequent sequences. And as expected, 47% of players received help during all days because that was the baseline. That is expected. And these players were playing on average 106 levels. But what is interesting about this is that we had two different buckets. This one that is not helping any day, or this one that just received some help and then no helping. That, OK, it's not 47% of players, but there's a 7% and 3% of players that at the end, they are playing 243 and 270 average levels per day. So this is much higher than the average, because actually there is, OK, there is a, around 10% of players, but they like more the version of the game where it's more challenging. And with this approach, we are able to find them and assign that uh, variant for them. OK, now we can go about how does it work. So I will go a bit more technical, but not too much. So trying to understand the different components that we have to build this, there is mainly the client on one side that will be running the game. And when the game starts, it has to decide, OK, which gaming experience should apply for this player. It should be the one that when we are helping, the one that is a bit more challenging. And that question is going to arrive to our platform beacon, where we mainly have two components inside that are represented by Chuck and Bomb. So Chuck will be the recommender, and Bomb will be the learner. So OK, we have that question from the client. That question arrives to beacon, and then the recommender is going to answer him one gaming experience. I'm helping you or not helping you. At the beginning, this could be a random decision. But that information will be also sent into the learner. So the learner is going to receive that recommendation and also some information about that player. What could be demographics, some behavioral stats, what was the time of the day, if it was holidays or not. And the learner is going to start recording that information. Then later of the day, this player will start playing with that uh, version of the game. And it will send from the client into the platform as well. That could be impressions, conversion, let's say, the outcome of the player playing that gaming experience. If we think about the helping or not helping, this, the information sent could be the, num the number le of levels completed by that player. So then the learner has already the outcome of playing that uh, version, which version was sent, some context about the player. So it's going to learn about that. And it's going to send an improved recommendation and strategy to the recommender. So from that point, the recommender is going to start making smarter decisions. And it's going to be better assigning the gaming experience to the different group of players. And now if we remove Chuck and Bomb, um, let's put uh, what is actually behind those. In the recommender, what we have is a model uh, deployed in AWS HMaker. And for the learner, what we have here is a training pipeline that is uh, launched from Askaman and run in AWS EMR. Moving now about how does it look in Beacon, so inside of our platform, what we have is a four steps. So actually, someone asked me before when, I, when we were outside, OK, we are talking about personalized rules. Looks super cool, but for sure, you have to do a lot of manual stuff. But no, what we have in Beacon is totally a way that is automated. So at the end, at the beginning, we have to create a personalized rule. And as David mentioned, we can create the rule from Beacon, select personalized. Then we will have to define which kind of optimization target do we want. If we want to focus our model to learn about retention of the players, if we want to have then a better conversion in the offers, whatever is our target. 
Then we can select the features, so about which features of our playlist the model will learn about. Step three will be configure the variants. So which are going to be our gaming experiences? This could be help, no help, different offers, whatever we want to configure. And the fourth step is once that we have these three, the model will go live and we will have this monitoring section where we could track how our model is doing, which are the features that are taking more importance, the different uh, rewards that we are getting regarding the optimization targets and so on. So based on this, we can see that the B conversionalization is providing the best gaming experience for our players. So this is uh, the main message that we wanted to tell you today. And this was all from our side. So thank you very much. You can keep in touch uh, with that Twitter from Dave and my LinkedIn. And we hope that you enjoyed this, this presentation. And if you have questions, we are here for you. Thank you very much.